Hey everybody, I'm so glad you joined me for making our craft to go with our dinosaur book today. It was a lot of fun reading about what would happen if dinosaurs came with everything. But it got me thinking if dinosaurs came with everything, you might also end up eventually with dinosaur babies. And can you imagine having dinosaur nests with eggs all over your backyard? That would be quite the science experiment. We could have a lot of fun bringing baby dinosaurs into Discover. Yay! But we can still play pretend, right? And so I thought maybe instead of having real dinosaur eggs, we could make dinosaur bath bomb eggs. Now, I know that not everybody likes to take a bath, but you know, cleanliness is next to godliness. And it always is kind of fun to play with bubbles and crayon markers in the bathtub. And you can also have these really cool bath bombs that you can buy and you can drop them in your bathtub and they sizzle and they fizz and some of them actually have a toy hidden inside of them. Some of them um, change your bath water to a different color. Some of them just smell really good. I think this scent actually, yeah, this one's watermelon. And um, I know that my uh, youngest really enjoys having a bath with these bath bombs. But you know what? They can be kind of expensive to buy, especially the ones with the toys in them. And they're really easy to make. So I thought I'd show you guys how to make your very own bath bomb dinosaur eggs here at home. And it only takes a few ingredients. Most of them you should have at home. Um, most of us have baking soda. Most of us have cornstarch. You might not have citric acid unless you do a lot of canning. Um, and so if you don't have that, you might have to run to the store for that. Um, Epsom salt, um, a lot of people have that at home. People will use that for um, muscle soreness. If you're in a, a sports or athletics, you can soak in an Epsom salt bath to relax. So you might have that at home too. And then if you want, you can put essential oils or natural dyes into your um, bath bombs to give them the colors that the store-bought ones have. I will tell you though, do not use food coloring. Even though it's food grade safe, it will stain your skin. And if you put blue or red food dye into your dinosaur eggs and then you drop that into your bath water, you're gonna come out looking like a Smurf. So don't use food coloring. You can purchase at uh, hobby stores. Um, natural dyes that you can put in your bath bombs. For our purposes, I didn't have natural dyes, so our, our eggs will be white. Um, and then the last thing you're gonna need is a water bottle with um, water inside of it so you can mist. So let me go ahead and we'll get you started on how to make this. You're also going to need some measuring cups. You're gonna need a one cup, you're gonna need a three quarter cup, a half a cup, and a quarter cup. You're gonna need a bowl, you're gonna need some spoons, you're gonna need all these ingredients. You're also going to need some Easter eggs. So I hope you saved them from Easter, everybody. Um, you'll notice we combine holidays and put them in a Halloween candy bin. Um, so all your Easter eggs. You can use little ones. We found that the recipe that I'm doing here made like eight or nine of the smaller size Easter eggs. If you have the bigger size eggs, it will make probably about half of that, probably about four or five of them this size. And then of course, you're going to need the toys you wanna to put inside of it. We're gonna put little dinosaurs inside our eggs so they can hatch into little baby dinosaurs. And um, that'll be kind of a fun surprise. You might forget which dinosaurs you've put in which bath bomb. So every time you take a bath, it'll be kind of fun to discover which one you have coming out. The other thing I would recommend is that if you bought a pair of shoes recently, to grab one of those silica gel packets out of the shoe box and um, put that in a Ziploc bag that you're gonna store your bath bomb eggs in. It'll help prevent moisture from building up inside of your Easter eggs and then um, dissolving the bath bomb before you are ready to use it. So if you can find one of these packets, I would recommend that. If you can't, well, that's okay too. Just try to keep it really, 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 really dry with no humidity. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I highly recommend that the first thing that you do is cover your surface with paper or something. Um, because this is a very messy craft and with little hands helping, it's going to get very messy, very fast. We had a lot of fun making these the other day and um, they got everywhere. So the first thing you need on our recipe that we saw here was one cup of baking soda. Here's our recipe. So um, I bought the super size bag because when I was at the store, this was the only kind I could get. Um, so you wanna get that and you're going to need a full cup of it. So we're going to just pour this in. If you get a little bit over, that's okay. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and then pour that into your bowl. And then we're 
Let's set that aside. Now the next thing that you need is cornstarch. Cornstarch. It doesn't matter what kind you get, what name brand you use, it really doesn't matter. Um, and here I recommend maybe spooning it out because it does tend to clump and get sticky. You want a three quarters of a cup for this. Um, you can kind of teach little kids about fractions, how, how um, three fourths is less than a full cup. And they can have fun spooning it out and then scraping it out and mixing it all together um, as it comes into the bowl here. Again, you want to make sure that you don't get any of this wet right now because it will get messy and clumpy. And kind of smooth it all off and that is enough for that. And that one's done. Now we need our citric acid. Now what, you may wonder, is citric acid? Well, we use citric acid in canning our products. Um, specifically, this one says for tomatoes, you can use it as a substitute for lemon juice. Um, I actually use lemon juice when I can mine, um, so I don't usually buy this product, but a lot of people do. Um, if you're looking for it in the stores, I recommend that you look for it in the canning aisles of your major big box stores. Um, it might be in the baking aisle. Um, it might also be in a seasonal aisle as the summer progresses. Um, it can be kind of tricky to find. If you can't find it, just ask or go to a hobby store. They have them at the hobby stores also. Here you're going to want a half a cup. So you want to just pour this in here. And I'll tell you, try not to breathe in the fumes of this. As it pours out, it can get kind of um, dense and dusty. And you kind of want to avoid breathing all that in if you can. And we're going to pour that all in there. And it just looks like salt. But it's not, because we're going to add the salt next. Now, here you've got some options. You might have noticed when you go to the store that Epsom salt comes in a lot of different flavors, <clears throat> including lavender. And the ones we made earlier this week, we made with lavender, and they smelled amazing. But it does limit you as to what other flavor smells you can add if you use lavender-flavored Epsom salt in here. So for this batch, we're just going to use regular Epsom salt so that we can mix and match different oils as we go. And for this, you only need a quarter cup. And you can tell your kiddos that you need four of these to equal a full cup. And your Epsom salt, you may notice, is kind of the thicker crystals. So please don't use table salt. It won't work as well. Um, and that will leave your, your bath water tasting like you just crawled out of the ocean. So you really want to use Epsom salt. And you're going to mix it all together in there. Okay, so we've added our main ingredients. Let's seal this bag up here. And now we just need to stir. And you want to stir this up really, 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 really good. So it's all mixed together. Um, let your little kiddo stir this. If you're kind of concerned, you can see some of the, the dust billowing up. Have them throw on one of those lovely masks that we have to wear out in public everywhere now. Um, that will help them avoid breathing in some of the dust fumes that's coming up. Um, and we'll just kind of stir this around until it's a nice, fine, powdery-like mix. At this point, if you wanted to color um, your bath bombs, maybe you want to make a bunch of different color bath bombs, that'd be great. Get out some separate bowls and pour them into your different bowls and then add your natural dyes. Like I said, please do not use food coloring. Um, you'll all hate me for it if you do. So please use only the natural dyes that you would find in a hobby store. Um, Otherwise, just have plain white eggs, like your um, store-bought chicken eggs would be great. Okay, so when it's all mixed together like that, and then the other thing, you can either add your essential oils at this point now, or you can add them as you assemble your bath bombs. And we're going to go ahead and try that as we assemble our actual bath bombs. I have six different types of oils here that I bought. We have sweet orange, tea tree, peppermint, rosemary eucalyptus and lavender and it smells amazing doesn't it camera guy it smells really good right now all right so we're going to add these individually to the eggs as we stuff them rather than adding them all in here because that way we can have some different scents um, the last thing you're going to need now then is your water bottle mister and you need to be really careful about this if you add too much water it's going to start foaming and bubbling so we just wanted to give a couple sprays some mist and then we want to stir and you can see the dust kind of stirring up again here so again, if your kiddos are helping, you might want to put a mask on them a little bit to help prevent breathing in some of those fumes. And then stir. You can kind of see it puffing up again. And stir. 
The, the goal is to get this so that while it's still very dry, that it's clumpable so that we can, see I had a little too much that started to foam, so I quick stirred it to get it under, under control. Um, we just don't want to add a ton of, of water all at once because otherwise you'll start breaking down the bath bomb before it's actually hit the bathtub. And we'll just keep stirring here. Your final goal is to make it look a little bit like corn, like when you make um, um, biscuits, baking powder biscuits, and you and you cut in the butter until it's kind of like a, a piecemeal or a fine, fine peas in there. It's starting to get there now. It's also getting harder to stir. It's starting to get thicker in there. That's also a good sign. You're not going to add a ton of water. If it's more than a couple, if it's a tablespoon or more, I'd actually be surprised um, because you're just trying to get it wet enough so that the um, ingredients bond together and will stick long enough as we put them inside of our molds. And we're just about there because it's starting to stick to my spoon. So that's how I know that we're about there. Now, if your kids have got sensory issues and they don't like touching things like glue or other things, they might not want to help with this next part because their hands are going to get messy. Um, but if they like smells, then go ahead and mix the oils in now so that as they're, um, as they're putting together the bath bombs and the molds, their hands will smell really good. And that might be just enough to convince them to plunge their hands into this powdery-like mess. It reminds me a lot of moon sand. And that's probably because you make moon sand with many of these same ingredients. All right, so I think when it clumps up together enough, you can stick it together like that, it's about ready to be done. See how it kind of forms together in my hand in a big clump and it's not really falling apart. Oh, there's a little bit, we can add a little bit more water. Um, and that's probably the hardest part about making these is knowing when you have enough water. I'm just mixing it around here, making sure you have enough. Okay, so I think we're good. I think we have enough here to make our bath bombs. So we're going to show you how to make a big one. We're gonna take a yellow plastic egg and you want to crack it open. Please make sure there's no leftover Halloween candy in here, or oh, Halloween candy, excuse me. Easter candy, that would be kind of gross and disgusting. You can use the, um, the printed eggs if you want. It's not so matter what it looks like on the outside, it's you, what you put on the inside. And that brings us to our next point. You want to grab your dinosaurs. You want to select one. We're gonna go with, um, let's go with our Stegosaurus. And you wanna put them in head first. And this is where your kiddos can really help. Because while you're holding your dinosaur in place, you wanna have them come over the bowl and push in this mixture, like so, until he's completely covered. And you wanna push him down with your hands really good so you're really packing that stuff in there nice and tight. You want to get there now you since you've got to close the dinosaur egg inside you want to make sure that you leave enough room for the top egg to be sealed so don't fill it all the way up to the top push down with your thumbs to ensure that he's in there nice and tight and then I'll kind of put that here so he doesn't spill over then we're going to pick out our essential oil and I think for this flavor, we're gonna go ahead and go with, hmm, let's go with, oh, you wanna go with lavender? Lavender it is. All right, let's pop this one open and we're gonna smell it. Hmm, and you don't need much. You just need a drop or two and sprinkle it on there and close your bottle back up. And then take the bottom part of your egg and you want to fill that and you want to smush it in there really, 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 really good until it is packed in there tight. And then take your other piece, make sure you push the tail of the dinosaur in, and then you just want to push down on your egg until it is nice and hard and solid in there. And this thing weighs a lot now. He's quite heavy. And you want to set him aside. We'll do one more here in a minute. Um, we'll do a pink one here. Same thing. You just want to pick out a dinosaur. We'll go with this guy. We'll put him in. And we're going to pop a lot of the, the uh, material around him, packing it in nice and tight. Again, covering him up good. 
leaving a space for the egg to seal, packing him in nice and tightly again. And this time we'll pick a different flavor. Maybe we'll go with, maybe we'll go with peppermint. Peppermint is a nice wake me up rejuvenating kind of smell. I put in my coffee almost every morning because I just love the way that smells. So we're gonna take a little bit of that oil and put a couple drops on it. So we get that nice, I'll put one more over here, I missed that spot. There we go. And now we'll take the bottom of our egg. Oh, don't spill. And we'll fill him too until he's nice and tightly packed, using your fingers to push it in there really good and pack it nice and tight so that it is full. And we'll smush it with our other one, just like so, until it's nice. And then you really need to tightly push it together. Your kids are gonna need help with mom and dad here, or your caregiver to really make sure these eggs seal up nice and tight. And squish it together. Oops, that one popped. See, sometimes it doesn't always work even for Miss Cory. Ah, there we go. And it is nice and tightly sealed on that one too. And he's really heavy also. Now these need to sit for six hours minimum before you can open them back up again and try them in your bath. So the other day we made a bunch of little ones. Here they all are. Here's all of our little ones. And I've got some warm water here, so we'll pretend it's a bath. And we're gonna go ahead and dissolve one of these. It'll be like Rolo. We'll find out what happens here. And we're gonna open him up. Oh, he's on there really tight. If I need a cracker egg, huh? And okay. No, oh, I don't know if I can get him. We'll try a different one. Hmm, let's see, he's really tight too. Maybe, oh, I got it now. Hang on. To separate him open a little bit. Oh. Okay, so we were having a little bit of difficulty opening our eggs, but we found out that if we took the, the eggs and we dropped them in the warm water for just, I don't know, about three to five seconds, and then take them out and dry them, they become much easier to open. And when you open them up, you get a solid egg. And so we'll show you this one. Just twist off the top, and there's our dinosaur egg. Now, shall we find out what kind of dinosaur we have inside? Are you ready? You ready, everybody? Okay, here we go. We're gonna watch it fizz. Look at it fizz. And oh my word, that smells amazing. Look how pretty that is as it fizzes. Now, I wonder. What kind of dinosaur? So you take it out, we'll pull it out. Our egg is still coming apart. Look, I can see the dinosaur inside. Do you see it? Its tail's peeking out. Put it back in the water. We'll swish it around. I wonder what kind of dinosaur we have. And oh, that water feels amazing. And it smells so good and it's fizzing. Oh, look, I can see more of our dinosaur. There's his feet. There's his feet. And we'll keep dissolving them. And it's getting lower and lower and lower. And look, now I can see more of his body. I wonder if I can break it off a little bit. And, oh, look, there's, oh, what kind of dinosaur is that? Does anybody know? Stegosaurus. It's a stegosaurus. We have a stegosaurus that hatched from our egg. Look at that. How fun was that? Wasn't that great fun? So go ahead, so that's my trick for you when you get these eggs and they're all done and they're all nice and dry. Let them soak for about three to five seconds in the warm water. That loosens up the edges here a little bit where you might have some dried um, um, egg material inside of it. It gets it in there and then they should just twist right on open and you can pop your egg out. So I hope you guys all enjoy your yummy dinosaur egg bath bombs. I hope you enjoy your warm, mm -mm -mm, yummy smelling baths. And I look forward to seeing you guys again later. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.